Hey guys, Andrey Maximov is here. Welcome to Hands On uh, Cloud YouTube channel. And in today's video, I would like to do uh, a review of an amazing AI video generation platform uh, provided to us by Synthesia. And the website is Synthesia.io. And of course, you will be able to find uh, a link to uh, that specific um, um, cloud platform. I mean, the referral link. Uh, I mean, um, under the under this uh, specific video description. So what I would like to do for you in this specific video gonna be the uh, overview of the Synthesia uh, cloud platform. I will show you all the features of that specific platform, uh, all the bugs and issues which I found uh, uh, over the course of uh, three weeks of uh, using uh, this platform. And of course, uh, for those of you who gonna stay till the end of the video. Video, um, I will explain how I was able to uh, take a PowerPoint uh, presentation, um, which I'm kind of using as a, as a uh, as a source for all my videos uh, and uh, automate uh, the entire video production um, process um, uh, myself. So, um, but uh, just to give you an idea. Uh, I mean the overall idea what I'm gonna show you uh, later on um, so I'm building uh, an educational DAX where I'm describing the cloud services and then in API libraries uh, and how to use them uh, of course providing the go uh, good quality code examples and um, um, I'm uh, using this DAX uh, to basically generate uh, videos uh, using uh, Synthesia platform, right, um, and uh, um, and then basically publishing them uh, to my YouTube channel and of course to my blog uh, as a supplemental, um, uh, let's say, video resources uh, for uh, for the people who are interested uh, on every specific topic. Um, so as you uh, as you saw, I have uh, my deck uh, in the uh, in the Google. Uh, in the Google Slides or Google Presentation Service, right? And uh, um, right now, what I would like to do, I would like to basically run the script, uh, which will accept this uh, deck uh, as a variable name, and uh, the script will uh, find this uh, specific um, deck on Google Drive. Um, then basically it will start um, splitting this deck to specific chunks and um, we will speak about uh, all this like why I'm doing uh, such a things <coughs> in, in, in a second but as you can see uh, basically I'm pro processing the uh, chunks of slides uh, to generate um, uh, videos um, it, I mean high quality educational vid videos using Synthesia um, so let it to generate the last uh, chunk uh let's see uh or process the last chunk and uh, basically tell us that finished processing so um um in a second i will show you what's going on in the synthesia platform uh, basically here yeah as you can see uh we already start seeing that um, I mean, all these nice and beautiful videos uh, started being generated. Generated uh, every single video basically takes uh, five slides from the from the deck um, and uh, automatically uh, generates video from five slides. And then all I need to take is just to take uh, all these uh, um, six different videos, glue them together using my. Uh, uh, my laptop and uh, upload everything to YouTube. Uh, that's exactly where I am um, with this, uh, let's say, journey. And uh, now let's dive deep um, to all the specifics, uh, why I pick up the uh, Synthesia, how I found it, um, and uh, how you can uh, use uh, the Synthesia and Google Cloud basically to achieve the same goal. Um, I describe all these uh, nice and beautiful things for you uh, I mean, in this specific video. Okay, cool. So, as I already told you, um, um, I'm um, the owner of the automation blog, uh, IT technology blog, where um, I'm providing a whole bunch of like technical how-to articles for the engineers, right? I'm quite a technical guy. I know uh, programming languages. I know uh, I know cloud, uh, multiple different cloud providers like AWS, Azure, Google. Um, so. 
Um, and of course, I have a lot of things to, sh uh, to share with the people. And that's why I started uh, basically my blog journey. Um, so, um, as you can see, I'm not a native speaker, right? And uh, when I um, basically came out with this uh, idea like, hey, Andre, it might be very good to start explaining people um, everything uh, using uh, in English, uh, basically as a, as, a, as a language, right? I found it a little bit uh, difficult for myself. Uh, it was a little bit stretchy um, to, to explain all these like topics uh, without uh, um, a lot of like uh, bad words. Like you probably uh, hear them uh, when I'm talking right now, like mm, mm, it, and, and so on and so forth. So um, uh, I wanted to find a way uh, how to uh, create a nice and beautiful professional videos. Um, I mean, either by myself, either um, either maybe I can find uh, an actor somewhere at Fiverr or Upwork and, and ask them to, uh, to start reading from the slide. But what I was uh, able to figure out is that, uh, I mean, as soon as I'm... Um, let's say just started with this particular journey it was extremely um, i would say costly for me uh, to find uh, such a people just because uh, the actors uh, who are not related to the technology field uh, or don't have a technology background uh, such type of a guys uh, they have no idea what they are reading from the slides and they're either messing up with the, with the terminology or like it's just like a disaster trust me guys so if you would like to play this game in the technology field you have to deal with engineers um, that was found by me in the hard way uh, but in general, um, I mean, another problem which I almost instantly figured out is that uh, you, you, you need to pay an engineer like a lot of money just because uh, engineers are kind of uh, lazy people, they are not willing to pick up the job uh, even if they are freelancing uh, for a small amount of money and uh, I mean, um, that's why I started like pivoting my mindset more towards the cloud technologies and of course I have this uh, cloud technology background by myself. Um, and I. Uh, figured uh, and I started thinking in a way like okay fine if I cannot afford myself to buy people uh, I mean buy people uh, maybe I can afford myself to buy cloud technology uh, and that was a perfect use case um, I started uh, researching uh, how I can um, basically um, create this nice and beautiful videos and that's how I came out with this um, idea of building a PowerPoint decks um, I mean the idea is uh, awesome and, and, and simple, right? You, all you need to do is just to create the slides um, and then uh, you need to provide the speaker notes um, and uh, right after that, okay, fine. You either need to present it by yourself or like, uh, or find a way to automate the whole thing. And that's exactly what we're gonna be speaking about today. Um, so um, as soon as I built uh, my first uh, PowerPoint deck, I started to research uh, how I can create uh, videos from uh, from PowerPoint, right? Uh, and of course, uh, the first page of Google results for any reason uh, was related to a whole bunch of like blogs and resources which are describing how to use PowerPoint uh, to start uh, uh, shutting yourself uh, using a web camera and basically PowerPoint uh, gives you uh, this, uh, this as a feature. But again, uh, it uh, was not solving my, my, my first initial problem. Uh, I'm not a native speaker and I would like to um, provide a better quality uh, video rather than um, uh, trying to speak um, by myself, right? Um, and I was thinking about like, okay, fine, maybe I can uh, start uh, looking for voice to speech kind of services. And then I, uh, I don't remember what I was uh, Googling for, maybe it was a library or something like that. And I was just, uh, wait for a second, AI. Uh, I mean, these guys are, I mean, uh, the AI field uh, evolving like, uh, like crazy nowadays. And maybe I can uh, uh, use some AI services. And I type like in Google, like AI PowerPoint uh, video and voila. Uh, Synthesia was the first um, resource. Uh, of course, uh, there are a couple of other like solutions, but what uh, caught my attention with Synthesia was that um, 
these guys are providing this uh, cool animated avatars, uh, like a whole bunch of people uh, kind of moving their lips and making an impression that, uh, that they are speaking on behalf of yourself. And I was like, wait for a second, I would like to test it out. And uh, uh, of course, the first thing which we are checking is the pricing. And uh, that's exactly where I landed uh, um, uh, as soon as I opened this uh, specific uh, page and I figured it out that, okay, personal plan, 30 bucks. I'm totally fine with that. 30 bucks is not enough. It's just the cost of the dinner. Okay. I create an account uh, and start playing uh, with the uh, integer. So uh, basically, um, okay, as soon as we will uh, render all these videos, I will show you the, uh, the example. But that's uh, that's the exact, uh, let's say, window where you are um, <coughs> landing as soon as you are opening your account, right? And of course, uh, you have this uh, nice and beautiful button like import PowerPoint and create new video um, and create new video. So, uh, of course, it, just because this video was like uh, <laughs> colorful, I pressed on this one, right? And uh, um, I mean, I tried to uh, build my first educational deck uh, by myself uh, and it was like mm, not a pleasant experience, I would say, just because you have to uh, make a whole bunch of manual actions, you have to pick up an avatar, you have to uh, change the background, and I was like, uh, wait for a second, I saw this nice and beautiful thing, like import PowerPoint there, right? So, but uh, if we will take a look at the uh, Synthesia uh, pricing plan, uh, you can see that uh, what's... Um, no, I, 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 I don't see uh, this whole thing here. But uh, basically, uh, this personal plan allows you to, uh, to build... Uh, it has a limitation. Basically, it, it allows you to, uh, to build a video just only from a PowerPoint uh, document which contains uh, not more than six slides. And I was just like, wait for a second, I cannot do this. Uh, I mean, I have to start like splitting all these things, but the cost was actually the winner here. And uh, that's why I just decided to uh, try to, um, let's say, build the first uh, video um, from the small deck, right? And that's exactly what I, uh, what I what I did. Let's take a look how you are importing PowerPoint presentation to the uh, to the to the service and uh, what what exactly you need to do. So uh, I already downloaded uh, a deck from another I mean another deck, uh, which contains uh, five slides, uh, and we are opening it. And as you can see, the first thing I'm doing here, <laughs> I'm copy pasting the, the the deck name. For any reason, whenever you are importing the 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 document to the uh, to the Synthesia, it I mean they are not picking up the name of the document. Uh, I don't know why, but it is what it is. So um, and as soon as the uploading process and processing part uh, gonna be finished, uh, you uh, the first thing which you have to do. Um, I mean in the in the uh, in the Synthesia Studio is to specify this video uh, title by yourself. So, okay, fine. Uh, <laughs> as you can see, I uh, did it so many times that I already know like step by step um, how I'm, I'm building uh, this, let's say, videos, educational videos at scale. Um, so, uh, of course, um, I don't, uh, I mean, by the time when I started using service, uh, the amount of avatars were, uh, I mean, was a smaller amount of avatars. So I, I, I don't know why, but uh, I pick up this uh, guy uh, whose name is Aiden. Um, I hope I'm pronouncing his name correct, uh, if not, sorry. Uh, so then all you need to do is to click uh, replace all avatars, just to replace uh, uh, or to use the same avatar on all the other slides. And then basically you can uh, do very interesting things. You can um, basically adjust the avatar by the, by the position on the on the uh, on the slide uh, you can uh, specify either full body like you see it on the screen right now or use a s uh, circle um, just to let's say emulate uh, um, a screen casting uh, type of videos or use voice only where the avatar is disabled uh, on the screen and that's exactly what I'm kind of doing uh, for the first slide right uh, then basically for all the other slides I'm uh, putting uh, Aiden as a circle and it automatically moved over here um, and uh, I mean that's exactly how I'm um, let's say um, 
um, organizing the uh, the uh, the video layout right now as soon as you uh, adjusted Aiden and uh, and uh, adjusted all the slide settings uh, you can start importing uh, the, or copy paste in this text uh, speaker notes basically to to this editor I'm not quite sure like why these guys are, um, are not picking up um, uh, the speaker notes from the PowerPoint deck uh, but again it is what it is right and as you can see uh, if you do not have uh, any automation in place you basically first of all uh, have to um, deal with uh, this five or six uh, slides deck um, I found that um, uh, using like five slides in a deck is the is the optimum option just because again it's way more convenient for us to split the uh, whatever number uh, or divide whatever number on five rather than on six um, and uh, and of course it's quite easy just to you know kind of skip five uh, first slides and delete all the rest as soon as you are kind of you know uh, splitting the entire deck uh, on multiple different ch chunks manually, right? Uh, okay, let's move forward uh, and finish this uh, finish this uh, deck uh, setup. And the last slide. There we go. Uh, and as you can see, uh, the platform automatically pick up picks up the the language uh, and the voice. Uh, I was uh, pretty happy with the, um, uh, with, the, with, the, with the default settings over here and if uh, we will go to the first slide uh, let me to basically uh, show you how, uh, how you can do it. You can either hit play right now and it will read the entire text or you can uh, select uh, the specific part of the text I mean at any given uh, I mean any given sent uh, sentence and uh, select play selected. Welcome back to the quick introduction to Python 3 for AWS Automation Engineers course. Uh, and that's exactly how you are uh, basically um, uh, reviewing uh, how the whole thing uh, should sound like uh, and uh, if the text-to-speech text to, uh, text -to um, engine which is used by Synthesia in the background can process everything, right? So uh, at the same time what you can do, you can hit uh, this play button um, and uh, they will generate a temporary video which allows you to reason welcome uh, back to the sorry uh, which allows you to uh, reason how the final video uh, will look like right so first of all i will disable captions over here uh, they are generating them um, and um, of course during the video um, um, preview settings i would say right first of all the quality is not uh extremely good but it's okay when they are generating the video uh, you will get an amazing quality quality uh and the avatar itself is not like uh, moving lips and not making the impression that the person is speaking so um i as an engineer i completely understand uh, what's going on here um and uh, i mean again let's uh, hit play and see that the actual um, text gonna be played from the second slide. IDE such as Visual Studio Code, IntelliJ I um, Basically it's enough, right? You you pretty much got an idea. Uh, now, uh, as soon as you finished uh, uh, basically um, uh, making all the changes uh, in the slides, uh, you can hit this generate uh, video and uh, basically what gonna happen afterwards. Um, you will lose access to this uh, editor settings 100% and completely. I don't know why they're doing this. Um, I mean, why not to leave, uh, let's say, um, uh, the the video editor or, or or the studio document or whatever it is. Um, I mean, uh, or why not make it available uh, for us for the editors? Um, uh, I mean, uh, forever just because uh, I may want to, let's say, regenerate uh, certain things uh, over and over again or like re replace certain video parts. But again, it is what it is. It's not like a big deal thing, but in general, uh, it's the place where uh, these guys are at right now, right? And, the, and, and of course, they're uh, evolving over time. And I saw that they are making changes. Uh, I mean, lots of changes. Um, I mean, uh, and I saw them like 
over the course of like past three weeks. So, but as for now, um, you probably saw that I did a whole bunch of like manual actions first. Um, and of course, I mean, uh, the whole process is error prone, right? I mean, you can um, forget to, let's say, uh, I don't know, change the avatar type uh, on some on some slide, right? Or like uh, forget uh, about rename, renaming something or, I mean, whatever it might happen, right? Uh, and as soon as you generate this video, you are losing uh, access to the entire thing. Of course, uh, in this summary window, you can rename certain things. Um, and voila, uh, as soon as you uh, press this uh, generate video button, uh, the, the video starts generating. The generation process for such a video takes uh, some somewhere like uh, depending on the amount of uh, text which you're providing uh, anywhere from like five to ten ish minutes per video and of course you may uh, launch a whole bunch of videos in parallel and uh, that's exactly what my uh, python script did uh, some time ago now let's take a look uh, at uh, the actual results of the automation let me to hit uh, this specific button and uh, let me to show you how uh, the whole thing uh, looks like uh, as a generated video to list Amazon CloudWatch log groups using the Bodo 3 library, you need to use the describe log groups method of the Bodo 3 logs client. So basically, as you can see, uh, we are getting an amazing uh, video. And uh, as soon as uh, all this uh, video has been generated, you can uh, uh, download the video itself in MP4 format. You can download subtitles, uh, you can duplicate it, uh, create a template, template from this video, or move to the folder, uh, which, uh, which is kind of a cool way uh, of organizing, um, I mean, a whole bunch of videos uh, in a single, uh, I mean, in a single folder just because i mean it's pretty convenient i would say uh of course they have some bugs and issues uh here and there but they're not really uh you know um kind of um mm, and issues which are preventing you from achieving your own goal now uh we just saw that uh, i mean the whole process takes a lot of time and that's why i uh, decided to uh, think about uh automating the entire thing right um i mean as soon as um I did probably 10, uh, 10, YouTube, uh, 10 YouTube videos uh, over the course of like uh, three weeks uh, using this specific service. Um, I found that I'm, sp I'm spending like pretty much a similar amount of time on uh, video production, uh, uh, let's say, um, part uh, of the whole thing, I mean, sitting in Syntagia and and, uh, and adjusting all the settings, copy pasting the stuff over over and over again, and I was pretty much bored uh, with all these things. But I mean, the the platform price <laughs> basically uh, um, moved me forward with with the, with the whole uh, initiative, right? So um, that's why I started to think about, okay, cool. I have to copy paste all these uh, things over and over again. Um, uh, they are not importing like PowerPoint deck correctly. And, and as, an, as an engineer, I started to think about like, okay, cool, fine. How they are doing it, all this? Uh, probably, uh, as soon as they are not importing the, the the speaker notes, probably the process of importing the slide is uh, pretty simple. Uh, probably they're uh, taking a screenshot somehow from the slide uh, and then um, basically, you know, uploading it uh, to, to their studio as a, as a slide um, and, and, and that's it. So, um, um, and that basically was the place where I started thinking about, okay, may I kind of... Uh, do something similar by myself and uh, um, what I figured out uh, is that Synthesia supports an API um, and I was like I love APIs I mean I'm an engineer I love APIs and uh, maybe I can automate the whole thing and uh, basically I spent the entire weekend playing with the I mean, first of all, I read all their API documentation. It's not too big, uh, so you can do it by yourself. Um, and uh, of course, they're providing a whole bunch of uh, very interesting use cases uh, for their platform. So what they're doing, uh, you can um, uh, create uh, personalized sign up videos. Uh, I mean, for example, when you're naming the person by, the, by their name, right, and, and sending them an onboarding video uh, where you're guiding that specific person 
Um, and as a, as a buyer, for example, I would be super impressed if the, if the service sent me something personalized, right? Um, then basically, again, customer onboarding videos, they are doing sales videos and visual chatbots uh, and assistant builds. And I was just like, hmm, I'm very impressed. And moreover, they integrate with Zip, uh, Zipier and uh, I just like, cool, maybe the API allows me to do all these nice and beautiful features. Um, so I started um, um, from uh, creating a videos API. I didn't read the everything like end to end. I was thinking that uh, basically I can, uh, uh, I, I think I was thinking that I need to use a create video API call to, to achieve my specific goal, right? And uh, from the first look, it was the right idea. So first of all, before jumping to the technical stuff, I would like to um, say thank you for Synthesia guys uh, for providing such an amazing API documentation. It's amazingly simple. First of all, uh, all the commands uh, with all the parameters uh, and all the request details are, um, I mean, are well documented in this uh, example window, you can copy paste it. And uh, the whole uh, API uh, is basically, uh, I mean, all about uh, a simple authorization by API key. You are dealing with, uh, with the JSON uh, kind of type of messages. You are using uh, pretty simple methods like get, patch, delete, post, uh, and that's it, right? And uh, you are doing this for videos, templates, script audios, assets, and webhooks. Uh, so, um, but now uh, let me to point your attention. You have to read the uh, API documentation very carefully just because uh, I, I learned it in the hard way. So um, I, I started uh, automating this API call uh, using Python um, and uh, uh, you know, kind of just to play uh, with it a little bit. Um, just because I'm a Python guy first. Um, and uh, where I stuck was uh, the automation of the avatar, right? So uh, let me to scroll down to the very bottom and show you how the exact, uh, let's say, uh, JSON payload looks like. Uh, I mean, we can skip all these uh, things like uh, title, description of the video, call to actions, callback. Uh, I mean, we will touch them a little bit later, but as for now, it's, it's not really important. So the input, probably the input uh, is uh, as a structure which uh, identifies the slides. And uh, if you read the documentation, you will um, you will understand that I'm right. Uh, so as for now, uh, the input contains the script text. So basically what the guy reads um, or what text should be converted to the speech uh, using um, their um, uh, text to speech um, kind of engine. Uh, you can uh, upload this, uh, a script audio if you if you have some. Um, so basically, you can specify the language. You can choose uh, or pick up an avatar, um, and uh, then you have to specify avatar settings and the background. Um, and I was thinking that um, I mean this part will be more than enough uh, to replicate, uh, uh, let's say, my uh, video production uh, process. Uh, but I was wrong. So as soon as I uh, started uh, playing with the avatar uh, and decided to use not rectangular but uh, a circular uh, avatar, right? Um, I, I stuck. Why? Because, I mean, uh, take a look. Circular uh, style corresponds to circle style in, in the studio. Okay, cool. That's exactly what I was looking for. But uh, the position of the circular avatar is fixed to the center of video, both verti vertically and horizontally. <laughs> Basically, uh, what they're telling us is that uh, they are putting the circular um, avatar uh, in the middle of the screen, <laughs> in a circle, uh, and, and they're not allowing you to, to move this, um, uh, let's say, avatar to any part of the screen. Um, and that was a very disappointed fact, I would say. Um, and I was just like, wait for a second. I mean, how I can use this API if it is like not allowing me to do anything? Um, and uh, right after that, um, I spent uh, probably 15 additional minutes and figured out that uh, uh, these guys, um, I mean, supporting video templates. So what it is, uh, it, 
I mean, basically, it's, it it is what it sounds like. It's a video template. It's uh, it's a it's it's a structure um, which uh, allows you to um, first of all um, design uh, a specific amount of slides, and for every single slide, you can uh, basically take a picture. Um, you can uh, set up the speaker slide notes. Um, sorry, speaker notes for, for the deck, um, pick up an avatar if you'd like, and the actual style, um, and, and then save uh, this pre-generated video as a template. And then basically, um, I mean, uh, as soon as you are using uh, in such notations uh, variables, uh, you can um, basically populate these variables in your uh, JS, uh, in your um, in your API call, right, in, in, in specify them in JSON structure, and uh, that gives you an ability to uh, either set up um, uh, speaker notes or uh, change the background picture uh, um, of the actual slide, right? So, and I was like, cool, that's exactly what I need. Um, but again, uh, template uh, API uh, is not universal. So, um, I mean, uh, the template is something hard coded in 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 their system. So basically, if we um, if we are using a template which consists of five slides uh, and every single slide contains at least a variable for speaker nodes like speaker nodes one, speaker nodes two, speaker nodes three, and so on and so forth. Um, I mean, you have to provide all these uh, speaker nodes one, two, three, four, five variables. Um, uh, in the in the JSON structure, and uh, the service is not like uh, smart enough to understand. For example, if I'm uh, using like just only three speaker nodes, um, I mean he can like remove the slides um, from the deck, for example. Um, so uh, that's why uh, to work around this problem, I created uh, five different uh, templates, um, each of which uh, consists of like five slides, four slides. Um, three slides, two slides, and one slide, right? Uh, and the reason for that is just because, again, uh, as soon as I'm splitting um, the presentation, which uh, which I'm building for for uh, any of my lessons, uh, like um, uh, by chunks of like five slides, right? Um, I mean, at the end, uh, we may have uh, let's say um, a chunk. Uh, which uh, may consist of one slide, two slides, three slides, or four slides, right? Um, and uh, basically, that uh, I mean, as soon as you have an ability to automate everything, right? Uh, you can uh, sorry, uh, you can use these different templates uh, separately to generate separate types of videos. Uh, now, uh, as an outcome of the of my script, right? Uh, you see. Uh, Sorry, I hope I, I didn't delete it. No. So uh, as an outcome uh, of my script, uh, you see that I'm naming all these, um, mm, let's say, out, uh, uh, all these videos uh, in a specific way, like the chunk name, like the first part of like five slides, the second part of five slides. So basically, this covers slides from one to five, this from six to ten, this from eleven to fifteen, and so on and so forth. Right um, now, um, as soon as all these videos are generated, you can, uh, I mean, save all of them um, to your. Um, to your desktop, you can download the video in MP4 format. You can download subtitles if you need them. Um, but if you're preparing everything for YouTube, YouTube uh, understand English uh, um, and can auto-generate uh, subtitles for you. And it's like very simple. Uh, you can duplicate the video, and uh, and of course you can like make some changes within the video um, um, if you if you want to to rename them. But uh, what I found very useful is that basically they implemented this concept of folders, um, and uh, for every single subject, uh, I'm putting all the videos in subfolders, right? So now uh, what we can do as soon as we create all these nice and beautiful templates, uh, we need to find a way um, how to uh, generate uh, an image from the slide and uh, basically uh, how to extract the speaker nodes. It's interesting. So um, I'm 
a Python type of the guy. So basically, I'm using Python as a programming language daily, uh, or not a programming language, but automation <laughs> kind of script language. Um, so um, I try to research uh, for like PowerPoint libraries, uh, which are allowing me to, which may allow me to first of all take a screenshot uh, of the slide and then extract speaker notes. Um, I found a whole bunch of like libraries, but none of them uh, was doing exactly what I wanted. Um, so, for example, let's try to Google it. Um, Python, I don't know. Uh, uh, X. Uh, 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 um, sorry, PowerPoint. Uh, notes uh, so and as you can see slide notes extract uh, I mean again whole bunch of like questions around the internet but uh, I mean I uh, yeah and I was able to find this as uh kind of library I try to use it um, I mean in my uh, on my laptop, but um, for any reason, as soon as I installed everything to my virtual environment, I was not able to, you know, kind of load it from Python just because uh, it was not able to find my shared libraries or Python shared libraries uh, on my system. It was kind of weird a little bit, uh, and I decided uh, to search for another way or solution. So, um, after half an hour of research, I was not able to find anything meaningful, and I started to think about, okay, fine. Um, maybe uh, Google Cloud uh, services can give me a, such an opportunity just because um, um, I'm a certified Google Cloud professional in the past and I just like, wait for a second, Google Cloud, why not? Um, first of all, uh, they have a Python SDK, which is not well documented, but we will be able to deal with it. Um, uh, so, and, and, but their services are amazing, right? They are like kind of replacing uh, the not a replacement, but they are good alternative for Microsoft um, like kind of products, right? In general, um, um, or they might be used uh, as an alternative for Microsoft products. Um, and uh, I was just like, wait, wait for a second, maybe I can uh, solve this problem using Google Cloud, and that's what uh, actually I um, I move towards too. Um, first of all, I uploaded the deck to the, uh, to the Google uh, and uh, of course I figured out um, how to use um, Google uh, Python Cloud, uh, Google Cloud SDK uh, for Python uh, to get access to the, uh, to, the, uh, to the Google Slides engine or Google Slides API or Google Presentation API called uh, like you want. Um, and of course, um, Mm, um, you have to access to the Google Drive, of course, right? And Google uh, gives you uh, an ability to take a screenshot uh, of uh, of the entire slide, and uh, basically, <laughs> that they describes uh, how 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 you can extract speaker notes. Why well, I'm smiling over here? So let me to give 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 an example. Uh, so uh, this is a, an official Google Slides uh, for developers, uh, like Slides API, and uh, take a look. Working with speaker notes, and um, I mean, so well, that's exactly what I meant when I when I told that the doc, uh, the the actual API is not very well documented. No code examples, nothing, right? So if you are not using their cloud platform uh, like on a daily basis, it's it might be challenging. But uh, thankfully, and thanks Google for that. Uh, basically, they provided a uh, pretty good explanation um, how to process uh, the data structure which uh, you are getting from the Google Slides API um, and, and find the speaker notes, right? So, um, based on this specific information, um, what I did, I wrote this amazing uh, script which basically relied on the st standard Python libraries uh, and the Google um, Cloud is the key for Python, right? So, and of course, um, I mean, as soon as uh, um, Synthesia API is, is very simple, um, I was able to use a, 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 
a native embedded like URL uh, lib3 for Python um, module to just uh, make all these uh, API calls uh, by myself. So uh, the script which I wrote uh, was a very simple. Uh, first is just like literally um, 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 a couple of like helper um, uh, variables, uh, constants and so on and so forth. Um, uh, to set up um, uh, a connection to Google Cloud Platform um, um, for slides and drive SDK. And uh, I mean, this part uh, is, is very well documented in, in, in Google Cloud API documentation, but uh, everything else might be challenging. Um, but uh, it's okay. So uh, what uh, actually we are doing uh, in my script? Um, I mean, we are uh, going to Google Drive uh, and finding a slides, um, uh, sorry, a deck by the deck name, right? Um, and then uh, based on the deck, uh, we are getting a presentation uh, ID and uh, um, we are um, getting the, 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 the slides. Um, after that, uh, we have to process uh, all these slides and extract the information which we need. So now, um, I mean, let me to select this text um, and uh, whatever is explained over here uh, been implemented in such uh, uh, in such a, in such code block basically, right? So I'm taking the slide and processing the um, Google um, um, slides uh, JSON structure uh, to find the speaker nodes. Uh, and if you are kind of using uh, in, um, uh, like uh, new line characters in in your slider uh, in your slide nodes, uh, for example, you are putting one sentence, then pressing enter, then pressing enter, then another sentence. So all these uh, things are uh, structured as a separate uh, uh, as a separate structures in the JSON. You have to process them and then glue all the all the. Uh, text blocks which find uh, found in different uh, parts of the JSON uh, of the JSON structure and that's exactly what we are doing here right uh, overall we are getting the uh, actual uh, speaker nodes uh, string uh, for every single slide as a result of this method execution so another interesting method over here is um, actually how we're uh, using Google slides API uh, to get a thumbnail for for a page uh, to do that, you need to use a presentation ID and the slide name, right? And then uh, basically you have to specify uh, the size of the, of the actual image, which you have to generate the supporting either small, either medium or large. And all these like things are predefined. So what this method does, it, uh, uh, it uh, creates the, uh, the uh, thumbnail of the, of the slide of the, of the specified size and upload it to the uh, Google uh, Cloud uh, CDN um, for 30 minutes. And you can either download it or like uh, if you will, if you are not doing this, they will uh, wipe this thing out um, like in a certain amount of time. Um, so after that, I wrote a whole bunch of uh, uh, Syntasia uh, methods uh, to uh, to process uh, the API structure. Um, so to, to achieve this, uh, to, uh, to, sorry, I built a whole bunch of um, Syntasia methods to basically make an API calls to the Syntasia platform. And of course, for create video um, um, a, uh, from the template API call, I have to deal with the inputs, right? Um, so I played with the, uh, with, the, with, the, with the whole thing using Jinja and so on and so forth. Um, but again, the templates in Syntasia uh, API, uh, I mean, uh, they, are, they are working extremely well. So um, let me to scroll down everything very quick uh, and, and, and show you the primary method uh, again, um, I mean, which does the whole thing. Uh, first of all, um, I mean, we are getting the presentation then uh, we are getting the slides from the presentation, then we are splitting uh, this slides list, um, I mean, the information about all the slides from the deck uh, to the specific chunks, uh, uh, per uh, specific amount of slides per chunk, 
um, then we are generating the uh, this uh, I mean <laughs> helper uh, helper print statements which are telling us what exactly going on with this uh, with this uh, script and then for every single chunk uh, or set of slides which we are processing um, I mean uh, I am uh, processing every single slide for all the slides I need the name I need the uh, speaker notes uh, I need an image URL for for the actual slide and then I'm uh, generating uh, a dictionary uh, of um, uh, of the variables uh, for Syntasia template right um, and uh, um, as soon as I'm ready I'm uh, calling uh, Syntasia uh, create video from template method uh, um, where I'm uh, basically uh, providing um, the slides which I need to process and, uh, and the actual uh, variable uh, variable sets so um, as a summary uh, mm, I mean whenever you are using uh, a template uh, I mean for example if I will try to uh, generate a video from this specific template right um, it will always create a brand new video which will be named like Aiden 5 right so the guys from Syntasia uh, states in their documentation that you can use the same type of uh, variables like I'm using here right and I was thinking that I can uh, set up uh, the video name uh, in, in the template uh, uh, dynamically right but for any reason the title uh, should not be included uh, um, uh, I mean the title should not include the variable I'm getting an error message and uh, I was trying to, to do the same thing uh, all over the place but uh, in different parts of the web UI but it looks like they are printing this thing and either did not update the documentation or like I don't know what so I work around this whole thing uh, by uh, again reviewing the API and they have this update video API uh, so I was just like, okay, fine, maybe create video returns me um, back um, like a new video object keys, right? And as a result, you are getting a video ID which uh, been uh, which which they are starting generating. And then uh, I just like, okay, it's cool. Now what I have in the update video uh, API call, and of course I figured it out that um, we can update the title, description, and uh, set all these settings. Um, I mean, as you start um, uh, generating a video, uh, that's a nice and cool feature, and that basically helped me to uh, set up uh, the video title uh, by the time that they are producing it. Um, so I'm using the actual chunk as a pref uh, prefix and the deck name, um, um, and the deck name as a as a full name for the for the video, and that's exactly how the whole thing uh, is working. So uh, as a result, as you can see, um, I was able to build a video um, literally with a very uh, small amount of time uh, for for the deck. Um, so let's uh, try to sorry I'm not in, in this part of the, yeah uh, so as you can see I mean all this uh, video videos being generated pretty quickly uh, within probably 10 ish or 15 minutes uh, everything parallel and uh, I mean now instead of uh, doing all this manual work and spending like hours um, now I can do it uh, within one single script and uh, you can do the same thing as well uh, this integer uh, platform allows you to automate all these actions um, so let's uh, try to play the video and see how it goes welcome back to the quick introduction to python 3 for aw amazon cloudwatch is a set of monitoring services yep. for uh, so yeah cool um i don't know uh about you but uh um, to filter actually, cloudwatch metrics use i personally like uh the the result outcome um and yeah i mean if you like it too you may uh, start doing something similar uh, for your own purposes um so overall uh, i'm fully satisfied with the Syntasia platform and uh, with a little bit of python knowledge uh and um, um 
I mean, and uh, an ability to uh, develop uh, or interact with the different cloud provider uh, APIs through the through the SDKs, you can like achieve uh, an amazing um, goals, right? And and build an amazing solutions. So in this specific case, I was able to integrate Google Cloud and uh, um, and Syntagma API and. Uh, almost fully automate the entire uh, video production service. So basically what I'm gonna do next, probably I will uh, put it uh, to the AWS Lambda or Google uh, Google Cloud Functions. Uh, and basically um, um, I will, uh, I'm willing to glue all these uh, six videos like together using uh, Google, uh, either Google services or like AWS services. Um, upload uh, everything to YouTube and send me a notification uh, email, right? Um, and uh, in that specific case, all I have to do is to focus my own work on uh, basically building the decks with the good educational uh, materials and speaker notes. Um, and, uh, the rest of the stuff will be done by um, uh, by Syntagma and uh, cl cloud technologies. So I hope you enjoyed this specific video. Um, uh, I'm very sorry if I was rambling uh, about the same stuff uh, over and over again. I I, I think that uh, I mean you might uh, you might be interested um, you guys might m might be interested uh, how um, let's say real engineers like me are solving that specific problems um, if you are um, interested in more uh, videos like that uh, just um, press uh, the thumbs up button subscribe to the channel uh, let me know in the comment section uh, like what you are thinking about uh, Synthesia, uh about Google Cloud Platform, about uh, cloud automation in general. Uh, let me know about the topics which you are also interested in. And uh, if you get lucky, I will uh, cover them in one of my uh, next videos. As for now, I wish you guys uh, good luck. Uh, enjoy your cloud journey. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, uh, let's stay in touch. Uh, thank you.